Uh, hey, React Labs, what we've been working on March 2023. Now, this is going to be an oddly more technical one about React server components. Now, I don't quite understand React server components, and this being a React stream, reacting to React might be a bit confusing, I think. And I forgot again to turn off alerts. <laughs> I never remember. Um, anywho. All right, React server components are RSC. I always call them risk in my head. Uh, it's <laughs> somehow you know life is but or all nature is uh, art uh, but onto thee all ch ch all chance now thou cannot see like what is the chance of that happening anyways is a new application architecture designed by the react team we first shared our research on risk in the introductory talk at an rfc to recap them we are introducing a new kind of components server components that run ahead of time and are excluded from your javascript bundle server components can run during the build letting you read from the file system or fetch static uh content they can also run on the server letting you access your data layer without having to build an api you can uh, pass data from props from server components to the interactive client components on the browser okay 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 a little php uh, this is inspired i feel like life is a is inspired by php right is this just uh, Okay, Risk combines the simple request response mental model of server-centric multi-page apps with the seamless interactivity of client-centric single-page apps, giving the best of both worlds. Since our last update, we have merged React Server Components RFC to ratify the proposal. We resolved outstanding issues with the React Server Module Convention's proposal and reached consensus with our partners to go with the Use Client Convention classic really when, when you think about a classic uh these documents also act as specification for what rsc compatible risk compatible implementation should uh support the biggest change is that we introduce async await as the primary way to do data fetching from server components we also plan to support data loading from the client by introducing a new hook called use that unwraps promises Although we can't support async await in arbitrary components like client-only apps, we plan to add support for when you structure your client-only apps similar to how risk apps are structured. Okay. I guess I don't quite get this yet. Um, I haven't played enough with it to have like a strong, you know, a strong mental model of what all these things mean. But I, I generally get the idea is that the server, you have the ability to async await and do all the things for data fetching, but your client is less supported of it. But they do have this use keyword, this new hook. Um, and this hooker happens to allow you to do some sort of serializ or resolution of promises. Is that, is that about right? Is it use use or is it just use? Use use or use? I don't know. Now that we have data fetching pretty well sorted, we're, uh, we're exploring the other direction, sending data from the client to the server so that you can execute database mutations and implement forms. Oh, HTMX. I've heard of this. HTMX. Good times. Uh, we're doing this by letting you pass server action functions across the cl server client boundary, which the client can then call, providing seamless RPC. Okay, interesting. So, so if I'm hearing this correctly... Just like, I hold on, let me just think about this and kind of have a mental model. That means you're effectively going to have almost two trees. You'll have your more explicit, like, client server state trees, right? Or whatever, the client shape server state. It's weird that the DOM has taken over so much that we even are shaping how we write programs around the shape of a DOM. It seems a little bit, it, it seems a little weird, but we not only have that, but in some sense, server actions are going to be ways in which you mutate your server or mutate your whatever, your data. And it's really going to be almost in the shape of a tree. Am I right on that? Well, okay, so you have three trees. In a sense, your server mutations are almost like a tree in, in of themselves, right? Because there's mutations that work on collections, mutations that work on individuals. And they're placed within your tree. I think is what I, I gen this is how I generally look at it right now. Maybe this is uh, incorrect. We're going to have to play with it for me to understand. Okay, okay, okay. I, I kind of get this. Um, React server components have shipped uh, in Next.js app router. This showcases a deep integration of a router that really buys into RSC as a primitive, a risk primitive. You got to buy into risk. You know what I mean? You know what they say? With great risk comes great reward.
The name is the primogen. I said that. Actually, I said that. What am I saying? I said that. Okay. People are calling it a Riz? No, it's Risk. It's definitely Risk. Uh, but it's not a lot. Let's see. But it's not the only way to build a Risk compatible router and, and framework. There is a clear separation for features provided by Risk spec and implementation. React server components is meant as a spec for components that would work across compatible Re React frameworks. Is this one of those phrases that people do where there's like a separation, but it's really never actually separated? Or is this actually trying to allow something like uh, uh, you to work, right? You, the the React-like um, Rust framework. Is this supposed to be like so that way you can also have React or Risk components, React server components, Risk components, you whisk with, you, I don't know how to say you server components, usk, usk components. I think so, right? We generally recommend using an existing framework, but if you need to build your own custom framework, it is possible. Building your own risk-compatible framework is not easy as we'd like it to be, mainly due to the deep bundler integration needed. The current generation of bundlers are great for use on the client, but they weren't designed for first-class support for splitting a single module graph between a server and the client. Yeah, that's why we're partnering with uh, directly with bundler developers to get the primitives. Yeah, I can see this being very complicated. There's like a whole thing of code that's going to have to be separated because if you don't ever ship the code, it means that you have to intentionally leave it out. But there could be types or other definitions within it. I, it does feel it does feel like there's like a lot of interesting questions that you'd have to understand. All right, suspense. Let's you uh, let's see specify what to display on the screen while the data or code for your components is still being loaded. Uh, this lets your users progressively see more content while the page is loading as well as during the router navigations that load more data and code. However, the user's perspective, data loading and rendering do not tell the whole story when considering whether new content is ready. By default, browsers load style sheets, fonts, and images independently, which can lead to UI jumps and consecutive layout shifts. Yep. All right. So hold on. I, I'm kind of just thinking about this more. Does that mean if you have a server component that gets data and displays something, it sends down the HTML. I sends down Ben Holmes, right? The CEO of HTML. And then, hold on. Let's see. And then there's like a client version that you have to have that's like semi-identical. Is that fair to say? You have like a client version and then a server version? Yeah, I know it's called hydration. No, okay, good. Ooh, I'm getting a bunch of mixed signals, but Warren Buffering is actually smart. So guess what? Uh, f all of you. Warren Buffering smart. I'm going to listen to him. Um, all right, let's see. The gist of this is that if you use async await something inside of a component, you need to use a suspense. Yeah, that's a big deal. It spins while loading. And Meta uses Relay internally to prefetch data while the router bundle is being fetched. This should allow for the server-side rendering to send not just the bundle and data, but full HTML, JS, hydrated, and whatnot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You get the finished HTML in mail. Oh, in the mail. Nice. Okay, hey, you know what? Disco option for your first time chatting. This was very impressive first time chatter. You belong here. Welcome to the team. I hope that you're enjoying your stay. You clearly belong here. All right, let's 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 zoom in a little bit, make it easier for anyone trying to read along. While we're working to fully integrate suspense with loading a life, si life cycle of style sheets, fonts, and images, so React takes them into account to determine whether the content is ready to be displayed. Without any change to the way you author React components, updates will behave in a more coherent and pleasing manner. As an optimization, we will provide a manual way to do preload assets like fonts directly from your components. Okay, we are cur currently implementing these features and we'll have more to share. Okay. Okay, so I I don't think I care about this kind of stuff yet. I would kind of like to see, like, do they have some nice, do we have some nice, like, okay, I feel like we kind of got what we wanted out, out of this so far because, you know, we're just trying to, I just really wanted to understand React server components here. Um, and so should we go to the, the next JS one? And so I, I want to, like, see what does it take to kind of build one. What does it look like? You know what I mean? To build applications with Next.js, it helps to be familiar with React's newest, newer features, such as server components. Uh, this page will go through the difference between server and client components, when to use them, and recommended patterns. If you're new to React, we also recommend referring to the React docs. Okay, I'm not new to React, per se. 
definitely new to this whole server components thing. All right. Server components. Server and client components allow developers to build applications that span the server and client, combining the rich interactivity of client-side apps with the improved performance of traditional server rendering. Thanks, chat GPT. Many appreciations there. <laughs> Similar to how React changed the way someone at Vercel is going to message me and be like, hey, um, I wrote that actually. Could you uh, next time not be so mean? Um, similar to how React changed the way we think about building UIs, React server components introduce a new mental model for building hybrid applications that lever the server and the client. Instead of React rendering your whole application client side, such as in the case of a single page apps, spas, as they're called, my wife also loves spas, so... You know, it's a great time to be a spa developer. Uh, React now gives you the flexibility to choose a whether or where to render your components based on their purpose. For example, consider a page in your application. Okay, so here's a page at acme.com. You got a nav bar, search, button, and client components, server components. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I wonder what the information, like in my head, I wonder what information is sent down because obviously hydration has to know which parts of your application do they actually need to respond to? I don't know what this means. This means to respond to versus what is more like concrete or set in stone. It's very, very interesting. I mean, techni technically, this is a great challenge, right? Stay hydrated, homie. Good call. Yeah. Uh, if we were to split the page into smaller components, you'll notice that the majority of the components are non-interactive. Yes, and can be rendered on the server as server components. Absolutely. For smaller pieces of interactive UI, we can sprinkle in client components. This aligns with Next.js server-first approach. Absolutely. Okay. Why server components? So, you may be... By the way, this is not sponsored. If anyone's trying to think... I mean, I should get sponsored. Next, you should pay me $5,000. Can You want to pay me money to do this? So you may be thinking, why server components? Why are the advantage of using them over client components? Uh, server components allow developers to better leverage server infrastructure. For example, large dependencies that previously would have impacted JS bundler size, bundle size on clients can remain entirely uh, on the server. So I'm very curious about this whole thing. Like this really needs to be qualified or quantified really. Like, I am genuinely curious about this. Like what percentage is actual like client code versus all of the ancillary stuff that goes around with building a UI. Like, are you saving what amount of gzip size? Wh what parsing time are you saving? What, uh, you know, uh, how much memory are you saving? How much garbage collection are you saving? I just don't buy that you're saving much. About 350? Like, I really do want to know what you're actually saving. Because I, when I hear this, it's just like the code is like not a huge amount. Leading to improved performance, they make a, let's see. Okay, hold on. They make writing a React application feel similar to PHP. Where's, where's Taylor Ot uh, Otwell? Otwell? Taylor. Where, Taylor, where are you? I can hear your Lamborghini in the in the distance. They make oh uh, or Ruby on Rails, but with oh thank you. This one's this one's all purpley. Hand you this one. Yeah, I can do that. Ooh, yesterday smoothie, gross. Thank you, appreciate it. If you came on screen, it'd be weird. <laughs> it's a joke you don't get to understand. That was the skeleton. Yeah, that was the skeleton. Um, but with the power and flexibility of React and the components... Okay, okay, okay. With server components, the initial page load is faster and the client-side JavaScript bundle size is reduced. I really would love to see some stats on this. Like, for me, this is, like, the biggest question. Like, because you're trying to provide... There's a couple different axes that people tend to, you know, consider when building. And one of them is... like is complication, you know, they call it developer experience, which developer experience largely has been defined actually as what I'm comfortable with more than actual developer experience. Uh, so that's one access in which you have to kind of consider things. The second one is like, you know, your bundler size, how big things are, you know, what kind of devices are you running on, all that. And so 
what is it actually saving? The base uh, client-side runtime is cacheable and predictable in size and does not increase as your application grows. Additional JavaScript is only added as the client interactivity is used on your application through cl client components. Okay. Interesting. When a router is loaded with Next.js, the initial uh, HTML is rendered on the server. The HTML is then progressively enhanced in the browser by allowing... Man, progressively enhanced. That is a term I haven't heard in a while. Have we officially gone all the way back to IE8 days? Is this like... Is this the new world we live in? Oh, okay. Here. we. Uh, I see someone in here. I've made some calculations for graduation work and performance increase of my poor realization that uh, is about 20 to 30% time to first buy... Oh, wait. Are you... Can you, like, point us to some data? Like, what data and how do you know? Knockout's a cool one. I heard about this knockout. Um, uh, improves the perceived performance. Okay, interesting. Perceived performance is very, very important. I think that that is very, very important. So, uh, you know... If people feel like your application is really good, then I think it's very, very important. Uh, let's see. I have a, star a starter outside Next.js with a debugger view showing what's sent down the wire. Okay. So this will be good to look at next. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. And you even have like a little uh, YouTube video. I might have to watch that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. When a router is loaded with Next.js, the initial HTML is rendered on the server. The HTML is then progressively enhanced in the browser, allowing the client to take over the application and add interactivity by asynchronously loading the Next.js and React client-side runtime. Hmm. I wonder what that practically means. I wonder if there's ever a situation in which exists that like, especially in places that have really shitty internet. I wonder if there's these situations, because I have this whole, like, I have this whole theory that out of application loading is less expensive than in application loading. Do you know what I mean? And when I say less expensive, what I mean is that it's less expensive to the user. So if you see something and it looks interactive, but it's not interactive until some other thing comes down, right? Like in-app spinners. I find in-app spinners 10 times more frustrating than pre-app spinners. Is that fair? For me, that's a me personal thing. That may also be just the problem I've thought about for a long time. Uh, all FE innovations only in DX. Absolutely. So I'm not sure if that's fair. I'm just saying it's something... I've personally thought about a lot. And so I I came up with this whole strategy, or I sold the strategy. I actually never even implemented it. Someone else implemented it. But I pushed really hard on, uh, on this at Netflix, where I called it, uh, instead of bleeding age, I call it tail edge UIs, where effectively the first time you load Netflix, we have to download all the UIs. We store all the UIs. And then the next time you load the UI, unless if there's an explicit message from like the app boot message saying you must forcibly reload, we use your old UI, download your new one, replace the cache. And so that way, the next time you restart, you get the newer UI. So it's always tail end UIing. So you're always getting like a really fast experience because we already have all the code. So we only rarely try to break your cache if the update is required. And so this led to a lot of complication, obviously, around like A-B testing and all that, where, you know, how do you, how do you, like, how does that work? Well, we are in control of everything. You know what I mean? And so I don't know what ISR is. Uh, unfortunately, I, I did this, uh, I did this, this was done like five years ago. I don't know what the name of it is. Is there like some fancy name? Incremental static regeneration. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. All I know is I just started thinking about television devices and how can we make it. So we try to do as 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 good as we can. Um, but we do have to reload sometimes. But if we don't have to reload, we won't reload, which I think is really clever. 
uh, we will just download the new one later on and and, and do that. At this point, are we uh, are we at the point of banning anac- uh, acronyms and initialisms? Yes. Okay, hold on. Oh, this is oh this is interesting right here. Yes, coming from an island with shitty internet connectivity, loading while the app is active sucks balls. Wow. Uh, loading things up front is way better. Okay, so at least one point of somebody who has experience agreeing with me. Okay, oh, that's exciting. Okay, exciting. Okay, so let's go back to this one. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's see. To make the transition to server components easier, all components inside the app router are server components by default, including special files and co-located components. This allows you to automatically adopt them with no extra work and achieve great performance out of the box. You can optionally opt into client components using the use client directive. Okay, so so Ben Holmes, since you're here, Ben Holmes, is this effectively, is Next.js effectively becoming... Um, is this like an almost like an Astro approach? Is that fair to say? Is this is very Astro? I think it's unfair to say PHP because PHP doesn't have a seamless transition to client side execution. Whereas this one is claiming that as something very, very, uh, oh, Ben Holmes. Yeah. Ben Holmes is definitely here. He, well, he was just here. Did he leave? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I guess, okay. Forget you, Ben. I thought we had like this really, oh, my chat's loading. I thought we had this really great thing, but fine. I don't need, I don't need you to talk to me, whatever. Stupid. Okay. Oh, it's very Astro. Yes. Key difference is that spa logic they put on top. While Astro serves HTML top-down, Risk splits into layout fragments. Ah, oh, nice. Grateful. Salt. Shake my hamstrings. Deal. I am very grateful, Ben. You can just see. Look at that. Ben said I'm grateful. Do you see that? He's, he says I'm grateful. Uh, anyways. All right, clients, uh, client components. Client components enable you to add client-side interactivity to your application, and next, they are pre-rendered on the server and hydrated on the client. Okay, you can think of client components as how components uh, in the page router have always worked. Okay. Okay, use client directive. You know, I'm surprised we don't have more directives. You know, have you, is anyone familiar with directives? Oh, damn, it stands for shaking his head. Wow. Is anyone familiar with what a, what a directive is? It's actually a real thing. And most people don't realize is that there is a directive in JavaScript. It's actually quite uh, It's actually quite cool. I think if you go to AST Explorer, I'm actually surprised. Explorer.net. Uh, I'm actually, I'm genuinely surprised that this hasn't been seen more. So if I go in here and go like this, uh, use a, a Warren buffering, right? I can actually have a literal right here at the very, very top. And this is like totally an okay thing to have. And so they call this a directive normally. So like this is just allowed. So it's allowed in any like function. So use strict is another directive, right? So if you go up here and you go use strict, this is just a directive at the top, right? That's why I'm no longer in my house. Yeah, exactly. So I'm surprised we haven't seen more of this. You know what I mean? I'm actually really surprised we haven't seen more of this because it is kind of... It's a very interesting concept, what you could theoretically do with them. I'm not sure if practically it's any good, but it is like, it's just seems pretty neat. You know what I mean? There's a directive in React Native as well for doing things. Yeah, yeah. See, I think it's just, I think there's a lot of cool space. You know, we can make your own directive without building a, a, our own compiler tools. I mean, I'm not sure what you do. You'd have to do something, right? What is your compiler tool doing? I don't know. Why are you being such a tool? I don't know, but it's just exciting. It's used as a poison pill during uh, bundling. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, let's go back to this. And so... All right, so let's check out this one. Use client, use state. Uh, look at this imperative coding or procedural coding, really. Uh, all right, so we have this set count, count. You clicked me. Okay, cool, cool. And so we have this use client. Yep, before, afterwards. All right. Hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's let's try to see what they're trying to say. Did I miss some other code in here? All right, hold on. All right, before use client. Layout, mobile nav, layout. Toggle, toggle. Toggle these two. Toggle children, use state fancy button after use client layout 
Okay, why am I not understanding this? This is counter.tsx. I'm a little, I, I guess I, maybe am I missing something? What am I not understanding here? What am I, what am I missing here? It, it should be obvious, right? Huh. I'm not, I, I'd have to look, I, I guess I don't understand what it's trying to say. It fixes the air. I know it fixes the air, but what is, I, I don't quite understand it because layout, mobile nav, toggle, use toggle, and fancy button, none of these are mentioned right here. And so I'm trying to like, I'm trying to understand what what is this purpose that they're solving? And why is there an error here and then not afterwards? Can't use state in, an, oh, in a risk. Okay, it's risky to use, use state. Okay, okay. So by saying use client the server then allows you to say use state. Oh, okay. That's cool. Oh. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Why? What I think is really nice about that is at least you get this error right away that you're not, that you're doing something on the server you shouldn't. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's good. That's good experience. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, use client sits between server only and client uh, code. It's placed on top of file above imports to define a cutoff point where it crosses the boundary from server only to the client part. Once use client is defined in a file, all other module imported into it, including child components, are considered part of the client bundle. Okay, interesting. Oh, dangerous and interesting. Interestingly dangerous. Oh, oopsie daisy. Okay. Very interesting. So that means if you have some sort of, if you have a co-type, a type that exists on both the server and the client, you must always define them in client code. Right? You might, you're going to be accidentally, you'll probably end up accidentally oversending code, right? Because one of the big selling points is that it reduces your bundle size, which means that if, if you accidentally import something from the client, you may not realize that you're importing more than you think. I agree with that. Yeah. I think that's interesting, server and directories, because that make it uh, it makes it a lot easier to understand, I think, as a developer, for those that can't see that right here. Server and directories. Yeah, I get that. Por que, Maria? Okay, uh, since server components are the default, all components uh, are part of the server component module graph unless defined or imported in modules that start with use client. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, components in the server component module graph are guaranteed to be only rendered on the server, yeah. Components in the client component module graph are primarily rendered on the client, but with Next.js, they can also be pre-rendered on the server and hydrated on the client. The use client directive must be on the top of the file. Okay, use client does not need to be defined in every file. Hmm. I don't know. Something tells me that you want to put it in every file. This is true, Greg. We've all had this problem. Sometimes you don't mean for it to, you know, just one wrong turn and boom, your package grows. You know what I mean? To me, it just seems like you'd want this to be true. And the reason why, I know it's not convenient, but it's super easy to accidentally make your bundle too big that you don't mean to. Like, by saying you must mark it, it makes the experience shittier. But it's kind of like a type safety. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an, in some sense, it's a type safety. You're putting a type on top of it. You know what I mean? Interesting. Okay. Uh, to simplify the decision between server and client, is, is my internet out? Hold on one second. It seems like my internet is out. Hold on. Every now and then, I my internet goes to the wrong house. No, okay. No, I realize that yours was a double entendre, but it's also very, very true. Uh, all right, here we go. I create a lot of traditional websites with risk to understand clearly. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I do too, but I have a very good idea of what's going on here. Okay, fetch data. It's interesting that client components cannot fetch data because they can only do server actions. It's a... I'd, I'd want to understand this a little bit more, right? Because if you have like a load more button, in some sense, that button causes a fetch 
which then gets data, right? So it seems like this is not this is not necessarily technically true. Access to backend resources directly. Well, of course, that makes sense. Keep sensitive information on the server. Didn't wasn't there like a huge problem with leaking? Wasn't there like this whole issue with leaking something, 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 something? Like you have a closure. Something, 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 something. This table summarizes the different use cases. Right? Uh, hey, oh, go see your doctor. Yeah, server actions. Yeah. Um, anyways, keep large dependencies on the server. Okay. Okay, I like that. Always reducing JavaScript. Good idea. Interactivity and event listeners on click on change. Okay. Okay, you stayed. Uh, browser only APIs. Yep. Custom hooks. Yeah, 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 yeah. React. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we get this. Okay. All right. Let's see. The server are kept, uh, are sent as plain text as hidden inputs. Yeah, see, that's funny, right? That's very dangerous. Yes, it's a really easy poison pill, your bundle. One, let's see, one import of an AWS type in my type file causes a bunch of AWS SDK parts to be bundled. Yeah, see, so exactly. So, so Griffin, I wasn't crazy in saying that this really caught, like when you have an automatic assumption, it can be very, very hard. Oh, that's very interesting. That can cause... Th there's a lot of problems with that. I wonder if they... Uh, Griffin, do they, make a, do they make a distinction? Do they make a distinction between import type versus import, right? Because if you use import type, does it reduce... Does it effectively remove that? Because types don't exist once it's compiled. Use me daddy would be very important. So use so import type might be the nice way to get around it. Okay, shake as it should be. I think it was an oh yeah, no, enums aren't types. So that's the problem, Griffin. Okay, so I know exactly what the problem is. If you import an enum as a type, you'll get really weird runtime errors. And like you get super bizarre errors. And so that must be it. Is that it it's why enums are just the worst thing in the universe. Honestly, enums are just the worst thing ever. And this is one of those reasons where an enum exported as a type sort of can be used in your application. And so there must be like this whole thing. Uh, there's this whole thing that goes wrong there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, see, that was the kind of my big worry. Or, yeah, in Rust, enums are the core of everything, right? Oh, why don't they fix you can't fix uh, enums in uh, TypeScript? They, uh, I need an enum for a response. Yeah, it sucks. That sucks. You cannot fix enums in. You you cannot fix enums. They're not fixable, and it's not because TypeScript isn't clever enough. It's because JavaScript doesn't have the right words for it. Now, future JavaScript may fix it, but today's JavaScript can, right? To improve to improve the performance of your application, we recommend moving client components to the leaves of your component trees where possible. Absolutely. For example, you may have a layout that has static elements, logo, links, blah, 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 interactive, yeah, 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 yeah. To make the whole layout uh, a client component, move the interactive uh, logic to a client component search bar and keep your layout as a server component. Okay, this actually makes a lot of sense. Like, theoretically, this is just PHP in some sense. It's PHP with some level of control. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It's not the way I like it. It's PHP, but better. I'm not sure it's better. It's a more tunable PHP, certainly. I, I honestly don't know if it's better, because I'd have to use it. See, the problem is, is that everything sounds great on paper. It always sounds good on paper. And it even looks good on a small project. Just because something works good on a small project and works good on paper doesn't necessarily mean that it it's really great for larger application. I think that's one of the hard part that people miss. You know what I mean? People miss this like this this little detail. All right, server and client components can be combined in the same component tree. Behind the scenes, React handle, uh, handles rendering as follows. On the server, React renders all server components before sending the result to the client. This includes server components nested in inside of... This includes server components nested inside of client components. Client components encounter... So you can have a client-server-client -client sandwich. Yeah. Scaling uh, the the economy of scale is very very hard. Totally don't understand it, but it feels uh, like a mess at scale. Yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know if it's a mess that's got. Have to try it some more. You know. It's better than PHP. I don't. I. I am curious. Yeah, it's very difficult to scale. It's very hard to scale. Um, nesting server components inside client components. Given the rendering flow outlined above, there, uh, there is a restriction around importing a server component into a client component, as this approach would require an additional server round trip. Unsupported pattern. Okay, so this is very interesting. So this is the N plus one problem, as they call it. Use client. This pattern will not work. You cannot import a server component into a client component. Okay. When was the last time I wrote PHP? 2012? 2013. Yeah, 2013. Instead, when designing client, uh, client components, you can uh, use React props uh, to mark holes for server components. The server component will be rendered on the server, and when the client component is rendered on, uh, on the client, the hole will be filled uh, with the rendered result. Okay. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't like that. That I don't, I don't like that. Um, something about that feels wrong and maybe it's because I, I maybe I just have to try it more you know what I mean I maybe I have to try it and understand it's it's stuff I you know I I could always be wrong but this something about this just gives me a really kind of weird feel to it It just, I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you that something feels weird about it. You know what I mean? I feel like this is the ergonomics uh, of this are a definite W for small to mid projects with low risk. Wow, get it? Risk. Uh, portfolio, websites, e-commerce, run of the mills. Yeah, but falls apart when you put it on big scale with larger projects. Yeah, I am curious about this. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I was always, let's see, I always think the amount of magic React has is a bit scary. Yeah, it is a bit scary. I always, I always go back to the exact same thing, uh, which is, you know, the whole front-end masters thing, right? This thing is built, you know, there's no framework here. Very, very nice. Very, very smooth. Look at that. What is, what's that? But I mean, I always go back to this, which is, this is a team of like two pe oh wow what's the chances that i went there this is a team of like oh what's the chances that i'm right there uh but really what's what a this is one of those things where it's like they have no framework a couple of employees their website's really really great i'm always i'm always uh i'm always curious about this like how is the optimization have we like have we jumped the shark on trying to optimize? Are we in a local minima? You know what I mean? Have we hit a local minima? I don't know. I don't know. And so are we solving problems we've created or are we solving problems that makes developer lives easier? I don't know. This is by the way, this is a go back end with JavaScript front end. It's really, I mean, honestly, it's really good. By the way, Gem, if you haven't watched anything from Gem, Gem's really great. Um, I, I don't honestly know. I don't know, and I don't, I'm not trying to rag on anybody in this case. I, I'm just being honest here. Whenever I use something and I'm trying to understand it, I try to understand, is this a problem because we've created this problem? Or let me say it this way. Who created this problem and why does it exist? Because there's always a problem. Document, uh, document object model DOM, it created its own set of problems, and we're kind of like trying to understand that set of problems, right? Single page applications, they created a problem. Is that problem worth the trade off? Is the real question. So, is this worth the trade off? I, I, I guess I'd have to use it more. You know, I really, I do really want to use it more. So now, uh, example client component uh, component has no knowledge of what children is. In fact, from its perspective, it doesn't even know children will eventually be filled with the result. From, okay, okay. The only responsibility is has to decide whatever children will uh, eventually be, uh, should be placed. <sighs> See, there's like, so I hate these, t I, I couldn't even read that. Let me reread the sentence. The only responsibility example uh, child component has to decide whether whatever children will eventually be, should be placed. So I do have this problem here. 
there is something kind of categorically difficult about this because now you have to make a decision about how something looks in two locations. And that's hard. Yeah, I know. I'm not that great. How does this affect a native application space where the client already lives on the device? I know exactly. That's a good, good question. All right, here we go. All right, we got these ones. Uh, next page is our server on by default. Okay, client server component. Okay, interesting. So on a, ser on a server one, you can do this. So servers can import clients, but clients cannot import servers. Okay, you get used to it. I know, but that's not a great answer, right? I don't like that answer. With this approach of rendering, uh, example, client component, blah, 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 the decouples and the rendering independently align the server components, which are rendered on the server before the client. Okay, good to know. Okay, this this pattern has already been applied. Passing React components to other components is not a new concept and has always been a part of the React composition model. It can make it a little tricky to debug. I wonder what it looks like to debug this. Right? Like, imagine if you have a client that has a server that has a client that has a server. What is the debug what 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 does the debug look like? What is it? What is that whole? You know, just something to think about, right? Uh, errors are forwarded to the client. Well, it, there's there's not even errors. Like sometimes there's just like runtime oopsie daisies that aren't errors, but you need to understand. Like, uh, just hear me out. Like, you have some values that are calculated as things go, and so you have a value that's calculated here that's passed into a server side component. That value then is recalculated and changed and passed into a client side component you kind of have to be able to trace how these values got calculated. So then you have to kind of think about how does that work, right? Like how did that arrive at this conclusion? I don't know. Maybe I'm just overcomplicating my head and it's actually really easy. Maybe it's really easy. Console log debugging. Well, one of the problems with console, so Yozo, that's, so that's in my head what I'm thinking. But Yozo, the problem with that is that you have to look, you have to align logs on the server and on the client, right? Because let's just say back in this little example right here, let's just say there's some error that happens here. There's some value that's generated here that's then passed into the server that's generated. You have to check your server for that generated value and then understand your client for how that value is generated or how that value is used, right? There's definitely going to be some, it's, it'll be interesting. I, I think the idea is that you don't use server components inside client components unless you really need to. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, but, you know, again, just like you said, big applications go big wrong. All right, let's see. Uh, passing props from server to client. Okay, serialization. Interesting. I wonder what they chose. Um, okay. Is there any, is there any, like, do you get to choose the serialization format? Keeping server only code out of client compo uh, components, poisoning. Damn, called poisoning. At least we dropped the idea of tree shaking. Uh, since JavaScript modules can be shared between both uh, server and client components, it is possible for code that was only ever intended to be run on the server to sneak its way into a client. Exactly, because it can sneak its way into by a require, which is very tricksy. Um, for example, take the following function. Async function get data. Get this thing. It's just on at first glance. Get data works on both server and client. But because the environment variable API key is not prefixed with next pub, uh, public, it's a private variable that can only be accessed on the server. Next.js re replaces private environment variables with the empty string in client code to prevent leaking secure information. I thought they were leaking secure information. I must have that incorrect. As a result, that even though get data can be imported and executed on the client, it won't work as expected. And while making the variable public would make the function work on the client, it would leak sensitive information. Okay. Okay. I feel like if, if you have a function that was only ever usable on the server, could you put use server on it and then just make this thing unrequirable by the client? 
I mean, I know they said uh, use servers the default. So, like, maybe that would be, a, again, I think that really goes back to if you want to require it on the client, you should have to say use client. Because then this would just never be a problem. Like a bit, a bit of a bit of being more explicit. Sure, it's inconvenient, but it could be really lithium. I don't have alerts on. I'm reading through this lithium. Uh, possible server only. Yeah, lithium. I'm so sorry. Let me. Get, I, I will thank you. I will thank you. Dodged. All right, server only package. Well, look at that. To prevent this order of unintended client usage, Coda, the server only package. Okay. First, we have to install server only. Classic NPM dependencies, right? And then import server only. Oh, strange. Why didn't they just use a directive? Why? Why didn't they use a directive? It just seems strange to me that they didn't use it as a directive because they already have some directives that they're using, like client, like client. Client only or client, whatever, client, whatever it is. Client, client, something, 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 something. I've already forgot. Use client. They already have use client. Why can't they have use server only? Import that as side effects. I know, import that as side effects. I don't know, just interesting. The corresponding client only is used to mark, oh, there's client only ones. And I wonder if there's also is even. Just questioning. Data fetching. Oh, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We're not there. Hey, hey, Geek Master, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Although it's possible to fetch data in client components, we recommend fetching data in server components unless you have a specific reason for fetching uh, data here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Third-party application or third-party packages. Since server components are new, third-party or packages in the ecosystem are just beginning to add use client directives to the components that use client-only features like use state. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, many components from NPM packages that use client-only features do not yet have directives. Okay. This is kind of interesting because you can import them on the client still. Okay, for example, let's say you've installed the hypothetical Acme Carousel package which contains Acme Carousel component. This component uses use state but does not have that. Okay. Uh, if you do it on a client component, it works as expected. If you try it within a server component, you'll get an error. All right, so they must have... Oh, you have to re-export it. Dang. Dang. That sucks. But I, I mean, it's, it's a, at least it, at least it works, you know? There is definitely some, fee there is definitely some uh, ASP.NET fee like things coming back. This is very interesting, you know, especially if you're trying to save client side stuff. Wrappers can really, you know, Feet lettuce. This is this might be a slightly feet lettucey. Okay. All right. Let's. Very interesting. Okay. So I feel like I kind of understand it now. I kind of feel like I need to try it out at this point, uh, because you know the more information I put in my head, the more useless it becomes. Do you know what I mean? I do want to go over. We can go over context, but I feel like the longer I keep reading about it, the less and less information I can kind of like really retain. And so I kind of got to try it out. You know what I mean? You definitely do. You definitely do. This is very, very fair. Just because it feels weird now does not necessarily mean it's terrible. This is the part where I need to try it out. Hey, the name is the Prime Gen. If you were here on stream, you would have saw me try it out. How'd I do? I think this is exciting. All right, let me turn on. Let me turn on alerts again. I think that uh, I think this is kind of exciting. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> oh, that scared me. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Welcome to Costco. I cannot I believe. Welcome to Costco. I love you. I cannot believe I just got bamboozled that far out. Lithium, I was genuinely surprised. I wasn't even pretending. Costco. I honestly I did not you. think that was going to happen. Can't believe you did that. Hey, thanks for all the follows. Look at that. You guys, you, you boys running a train on me. Follow train, that is.
Many appreciations for that follow train, huh? I know when someone is faking elation. I have ex years of experience. <laughs> Welcome to Costco. I love you. Interesting. Okay. Well, hey, uh, let me say some thank yous right here. You. Hey, oh, I got a lot of thank yous to say, but I want to say this one right away. I love uh, you. Uh, uh, Tgot, uh, I like your takes on functional programming, but I also love the theory and ecosystem behind it. Sometimes uh, you need to spend an insane amount of time to wrap your head around the concept, but then you just don't understand why it's not the norm. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole Rust problem, right? And by the way, thank you for that tier one or the tier three, baby. But I mean, exactly. This is any this is any techno technological problem. When there is an actual, when there's an actual, <laughs> you come in with nice insights and you leave with nice headshots. Thank you. I appreciate that, Yozo. Welcome to okay. Costco. Okay, Yozo. You. Okay. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. It was great. Okay. Um I totally I totally get this because here's the deal is that when... <laughs> Okay, come on, guys. <laughs> I think we've all had enough, right? <laughs> Welcome to Costco. I love you. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Oh, yeah, I'm red. I'm like sweating. I'm red. I'm the redogen right now. Oh my goodness. Ugh. All right. Um, hold on. Let me just say my piece, and then I can say some thank yous. Uh, but really. The problem with any sufficiently difficult technology is that when you learn it, it solves some problems in some way. And it's very easy to look at the world and, and, and think to yourself, why isn't everyone doing this? I mean, really, real talk. This is just server components. Welcome to Costco. Right? I love server you. components are just a sufficiently complex way to look at the world. And for a lot of people, this makes sense, right? It makes a lot of sense to them. But to the uninitiated, it seems obtruse, filled with abstraction, all these kind of things. And maybe those, some of those you know, concerns are extremely valid, but nonetheless, this is how they feel. And so I feel like most technology, you can technically build anything. For me, it's about the tuning, right? It's about the Welcome performance. Welcome to Costco. I love you. It's about all that other stuff that goes along with it. Because here's the deal. The last two weeks of my life has been to create a production service at Netflix that someone else at Netflix couldn't make work. They tried. They said, hey, I can't make this work. We can't have visualizations. And I said, I will make it work. Welcome to Costco. And I that's a sufficiently you. difficult job, but because I have Welcome sufficiently low amounts of abstractions, I'm able to kind of navigate through these waters and make these really like complicated changes to me that are fairly simple and actually made it really easy to build a pretty fast way to change things. But nonetheless, for someone to go into that project now and look at it and try to do stuff for it, it would be complicated to them. But it was built with a different purpose in mind. The purpose was to be able to build something that you can quickly generate data in the form of CSVs, in the form with time as an access or specific IDs, with data that you don't have any idea it's ordering. You know what I mean? Like you don't get a choice. You don't get to know how much of the data is there. And, it, and, and, and a single row on the CSV could be split between eight separate data events. Right? And so like that was the whole problem was that you had to download one to two million bytes worth of information uh, you know, or not one, not one to two million bytes. Uh, sorry, it, it was somewhere between the heap would grow one to two gigabytes, and it just blow everything up once you had three or four requests come in. You just didn't have enough uh, memory on these machines, and so I and I I just couldn't keep allocating more memory on these machines, and so it, it became it progressively harder. You know what I mean? It's a lot of gigawatts, and so it just it became super hard to do correctly. Anyways, so that's just kind of my thoughts. I know that was super rambly. It's just I program in a specific way. And for me, it makes sense. For other people, it feels very confusing. But I also have a completely different access in which I have to program on. And I don't have, like, I could never use the spread operator. The spread operator is just not something I can even consider. Okay? A for each is just something I don't have the computational uh, ability to even use.
Like it's really, really, it's a, just a different world. And so I have just different ideas of what is good and bad. And I think that's just like, that just goes to this thing right here, which is everyone has different constraints and what they look at as good and bad. And so it's hard for me not to evaluate software in that. I, yeah, no, no, I know what you meant, Tigod, uh, which is, is just like, but it, it's exactly that. Why isn't everyone programming like Haskell, right? For you, that abstraction hit home and now it makes so much sense and your ability to move fast is like perfectly aligned, right? How do you uh, know row type Welcome and polymorphism? How do you destroy the, you. Uh, and how it destroys the spread officer? Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. the spread officer, <laughs> spread of officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, let's see, do you know row types and Welcome row polymorphism crossbow. and how it destroys the spread you. operator? No, I'm not, I'm not precisely sure what you mean by those words. Like I understand all those words individually, but when you put them together like that, I feel stupid and it makes me kind of angry. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. Hey, lithium, lithium. Hold on. Griffin, I already said, thank you. Uh, let's see. Ryan Magoon, thank you very much. Tigot, thank you for those 10 gifted subs. I must have missed that. No, I did say thank you for that. Shut it down. Appreciate that, Swizz. Okay, knock 99. There we go. We're back up. Thank you for that tier once. Let's go. Raphael, several, uh, wow, seven months of learning. Yeah. Oh, and not being depressed. Oh, we already read that one, but hey, awesome. Got a job at Netflix. Thanks for keeping coding enjoyable. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Chill Code Lift, are you still here? Chill Code Lift, are you still here? That's cool. Let's go. Let's go. That's so cool. Uh, Sharera Ja, thank you very much. I appreciate that. By the way, Netflix, by the way, Chatter, yeah. Uh, thank you, Fortnite lover. 69 blank fella. Me, that's what she said. I heard that. Thank you for the community sub, Fortnite lover. Uh, unknown, uncow un nice. Uncow nice. I don't even know how to say that word. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. TV Twitch, uh, Dom Bael with the one month gift. Thank you. Appreciate it. Atakulan, Atakana, Atakana Luke. Thank you for the Twitch Prime Black Frog. Let's go. Tier one. Hell yeah, brother. Static name. Hell yeah. Thank you for that tier one. Yo, Mac, for the brand new Twitch Prime and Lithium for the 20. That made me shit my pants just a little bit. Geek Master, thank you for the tier one. Lyrite. Tier one again. Ames and Games. Are you from Ames, Iowa? Does he streams every day? I try to. Uh, Cavs, Nucklin, uh, Cavs, Nuck, Lincoln. Let's go. Uh, Daphil with the brand new Twitch Prime. Thank you. Uh, Dare Tsuki. Brand new tier one. Let's go. And it's a Maluki. Thank you for the brand new tier one. I think the colorful smoothies you've been drinking uh, is the cause of the anal leakage. Don't put that on me. Okay, come on. I think it's you, buddy. Uh, Yozo, again, thank you for the 20. Six months, let's go. Ineptus Mechanicus. Uh, T got you got me also on that one. Appreciate that. Neil Cromer, let's go. Smedward, thank you very much. And Retiner Krager, let's go. Let's go. Mr. Walrus, Running Flavor, Fee Ferrot, and Bay, Bay Asher, Zombie. Uh, I got a job at Netflix Cleaning Toilets. You want to chat? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, uh, Walton Pendler. Uh, real talk. <laughs> Many appreciations. Thank you, Lithium. I appreciate that. You're so funny. Look at you go, little funny guy. All right, so how do I... How, uh, <laughs> thank you, Lithium. All right, Ames and Games, thank you. Ames, did, did I say Ames, Iowa? Did, is, is that where you're from? I, I must have missed it if you said that. Skills required to be a junior dev? Uh, they're predominantly technical. Uh, all right. So how do we get started with, uh, React server side components? Um, is there, uh, let's see, Ben Holmes gave me something, didn't he? Creates a voting system for content to read on stream. Reads next docs. All right. All right. A simple React component, uh, server components implementation. Oh, that's <laughs> I didn't get as scared that time, but still, you can imagine what it could have been like. I just happened to catch you before you laid it down. You know, just use Next.js. I'm not even, honestly, I don't even know how to use Next.js. All right. All right. Watch the live demo with Dan Abramov here. Okay. 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 Okay, that's fine. Okay, we can do that. Advice on production deploys. Oh, that's 
Honestly, I, I, I kid you not. I honestly have no idea why you guys do this. Real talk, I have no idea why. I just read Next documentation and React documentation for like the last hour. I have a hard time connecting reality with this heart of mine, and I just I, I feel like you guys have been entirely too kind. Thank you. I appreciate that. Get him out. Get you him out. Before the storm. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Thank you, Leet Master. Give me the meat. Brownie. And give it to Appreciate me that. And uh, Janures Kiro, thank you for the five gifted subs. I will give you the meat and give it to you raw. Baby. <laughs> Way too dank, yeah. Okay, so let's let's play around with this one first because this one seems really straightforward, right? So we don't have all the next. We don't have all the stuff. We don't have any of that. It's just really, really kind of like this nice, you know, uh, you know, it feels good, right? Welcome to Costco. I love you. Uh, okay, NPM. What is... What is... Wait, NPM. What do you mean? Why is it not finding anything? NPMI. Why? Why? What? Okay, that's weird. It's not grabbing. It's not grabbing stuff. First install peer dependencies uh, error disabled. Okay. You know what I mean? Let's figure this out. Let's let's play with this a little bit. Uh, how's the startup going? It's going good. Uh, does anyone here know the context of, of the PHP twit? A uh, twit? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna learn a little bit about it. Is Prime Stream just Welcome a Costco, Costco ad? Yeah, it is. I love you. It is. I'm not. Now's not the time to be a uh, Clark. Now's not the time. Um, all right. So there we go. So let's look at this. We have server. We have a build. Okay. So this must be. Oh. Okay. I I should probably talk to Ben about this. Ben, you're 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 nesting. Ben, you're nesting. Look at that nest right now for a second, okay? We're in a function called build, awaiting an ES build with a plugin, with a setup, with a resolve, with an if. Ben, what the hell am I looking at, Ben? Okay? And then you await ES build again. I'm very... How many ES builds do you need to await? Okay. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. All right. So we don't care about this. Is this the dev thing? So this must be how we do the dev. Whoa, 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 whoa. You put none of them on 42069? Everyone knows you're supposed to put it on 42068 and then add the comment disappointed. <laughs> it's so close. It's so close to being good, yet at the same time, just edging. You edge the goodness, okay? Four twenty seventy. Well, that's not edging. You passed it. Okay, you gotta edge it. You edge it. Okay, edge me, daddy. Yeah, we're trying, B Ben. All right, there we go. Uh, this should function at a build. Okay, local host three thousand. Twenty-two seconds long, thirty-two hundred instances of garbage collection. Eighteen-ish some seconds long, a thousand instances of garbage collection. All right, remember, I I definitely do a local host. Okay. This is my non-edited browser. It's just like, whatever. All right, dev panel. Okay, whoa. Wait, hold on. Is this... Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Oh, why does that look different now? <laughs> Are you telling me every time I zoom, it doesn't... Ben, when I zoom out, it doesn't, it doesn't handle zooming well? Ben, this is... Ben, Ben, B damn it, Ben! You didn't. You're telling me you didn't listen to zooming. 
Ben! What is the what is the zoom event? There's no way. No, there has to be some way Welcome to do to it. Costco. I, I don't believe you. you. There's some way to do this. Uh, listen uh, to. There has to be a zoom event, right? Is there not Welcome a zoom to event? Costco. I love you. Yeah, I swear it's resize, right? Because technically, when you do this, don't you have like here? Uh, yeah. See. Yeah. 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 So you can see it being resizing technically right here, right? So I feel like you should technically know there is a zoom event. Okay, there should be a zoom event. I thought there was a zoom event at this point in the world. Zoom event window. Uh, ooh, jQuery. Do we have a jQuery one? I knew jQuery was the best. I knew jQuery was the best. jQuery, always the best. Have you listened to Windows with? Uh, it's a resize event. Yeah, it's the resize event. Okay, that's right. I was just making sure there wasn't some new one called like Zoom. I don't know. It could jQuery, of course. Okay, so we have like this whole, we have a page. So this, okay, so a page. Where is album even, where is albums? Oh, interesting. Why is that? Oh, this is JSX. Ew. Okay, so why why is that in there? Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so we can't do that one. Uh, is this J? I know. Why is it? Ew. Why is albums async? I don't know. Okay, so this allows you to use async components. Is that what happens? Is this part of? Is this part of server stuff? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like I'm not sure if I like that at all. Real talk. I don't know if I like that. Can't I update this? Is that not how you update it? Welcome to Costco. I love you. All right. Hey, you Siren. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Oh, 5.1 beta need. I'm not sure if TS server is, is TS server. Is there public one that one? Okay. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to say right away. I don't like this. Why don't I like this? Um, right away. Here's the problem I see. Okay. Let's just pretend searchable album lists exist, right? And inside searchable al album list, what happened if I have another await somewhere in here, right? Right. Like, the reason why I'm always, you know, uh, wait 100, right? Any of these things I'm always, I'm always pretty skeptical about, right? Uh, MS number, uh, promise, void, bam, return, a new promise, res, set, time out, yes. Ooh, set time out, res MS, right? So let's just pretend we had this one. Oh, I'm still in JavaScript? Shoot, I'm still in JavaScript. JavaScript. I love it. <laughs> TS server is pretty funny. We don't know which one that is. How do you handle it? Uh, you put a number in there. I don't know what that is either. We can't do that. Well, what do you want from me, TS server? Uh, anyways, like to me, this is... This is where these things get really scary. So this is one of this is one of the problems that we had that was actually a really hard problem with Falcor. So I kind of voiced this a little bit and people told me I was kind of crazy on this one. I am very curious about how this one's going to be solved, which this effectively since every component has this ability to kind of do something, there can be some some potential dangers there. Do you know what I mean? There can there can definitely be some uh some dangers to this whole thing. Dude, my my indenting, tree sitters indenting on comments is terrible. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, there is. Look at that. There is. Look at that. They have they have JS docs right there. Oh, it is illegal. Okay. But but do you know what I'm saying? Does anyone does anyone understand the problem that we're kind of running into right here? Right? And so obviously besides for the fact that it's like hey, I'm a promise, uh you may not realize what's ha yeah, you, it enables really easy waterfalls. This is actually a problem that Falcor had uh 8 years ago. This is like the exact problem with Falcor. It's or one of the many problems with Falcor is that it's really easy to create situations which aren't great. I don't know. Uh, I don't know of UJS. The N plus one problem, right? So it's the N plus one problem. So I can. Well, I broke. Wait. Por qué, Maria? Why are you breaking? Oh my, Ben! Damn it, Ben! So now we should be able to do this one. All right. So let's go like this. Right. Let's go in here and let's make it a nice ten thousand. So you got to be careful, right? Because you know, if each one of these take you know two hundred fifty milliseconds to complete, right? If each one of these things take another one of these 250 milliseconds to complete, you can... Right, you theoretically can get into... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, what is it? Wait, what is, it? what is your problem? What, por qué, Maria? What is your problem? What have I done? Oh, I forgot that part. Right? You, you theoretically can run into these problems where you have these, like, long load times. Hey. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Whatever. I must have goofed that Welcome one up. Welcome to Costco. Here. Let's get rid of that one. You. Let's get rid of that one. Dap that thing. Uh, let's just dap that. Let's get rid of this crap. But you, you see what I'm saying. I, I, I'm very worried about that one right off the rip. Okay. Is it page? All right. Anyways, although async components have uh, these easy waterfall, that's already the case in default react with rest call waterfalls in effect. It doesn't seem like anything new, bottom line. It's harder to see on your server. It's much harder to see on your server. And also with serverless, right? You don't necessarily have a API gateway in which you're getting a bunch of information from. You have individual services in which you're, uh, in which you're calling. It can be a little bit tricksy. I think I think it can be a little bit more tricksy than you realize. Uh, there's a clear separation between server and client. Uh, has a reason to exist. You can dab, but can you dab? I can dab. We can dab if we need to. So a dab is a very specific one, right? And so let's see. So if I had a foo. Uh, 42, I could, I could dab that. Oopsies. Oh, dab's on that one. Okay, dab's on that one. I didn't realize dab's was there. Dab is on that. I just never dab, right? You can also dib. Not really a dibber. Not a dibber. You know what I mean? Never been a dibber. Welcome to Costco. Uh, we need not, we, do we not need a backend now? In some sense, I mean, with, with how much serverless is taking over, you can get a pretty far distance without a backend. <laughs> I'm just anywho okay so pretty neat pretty neat all right so let's try to find let's see where's the client how do I find a the client all right search box page page has the suspense albums so albums is does where is this where is this dev bar dev panel uh dev panel where is this thing at dev panels and under utils ah utils all right uh aside oh what's that what the hell's an aside I don't even know what an aside is wow this thing's big um, use window resize. Well, that's not helping. Oh, direction vertical owned. What's, what's the other, what's the other options for use resize? You can't do both. Why can't you do both? Can you do both? Uh, if direction equals uh, vertical, vertical, I mean, not that you'd have to, right? Um, let's go like that. 
Uh, event dot page x else if direction equals uh horizontal uh, let's do that let's take that guy in there i don't know why i'm doing all this you know it just feels right you know what i mean uh else i mean i guess they they just simply had can we just do both can we do both is that fine i don't know is that fine i don't even know is that fine is that a thing we want to do? Dev tools. I don't even know how Dev tools got uploaded. Where is Dev tools even at? Uh, Dev tools. Utils. Is it utils? Utils. Right. Is that is that what it is? Oh my goodness. It's utils. It's app utils. Dev panel. Let's put you up top. Dog. Welcome to Costco. Let's put. Oh, I I'm already you. in here. Oh, this is already in here. Uh, let's go like this. Let's take this thing and go all. Oh, really? How, oh, direction. What's the direction? Oh. Oh, can you do you accept that as an answer now? It's not giving me a good resize. Is it okay? So is that only for vertical resize? Well, it's not even vertically resizing. What the hell is this resize even for? I don't even know what the resize is for. What the hell is the resize even for? Uh, let's see, uh, and quit this chaos. What is this? Uh, just r write a listener for resized observer. No, I'm just trying to play around with this. Uh, this is the one part of the code that bad. Well, it's also the one part of the code that hits you in the face first, Ben. Gosh. Prime, what is happening? Okay, so that's, oh, that's for resizing. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, I see, 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 I see. Okay, uh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, let's go like that, and then let's. All right, okay. Click and drag on the word dev panel. I know, but Benzi, I want it to work. You know, like when I when I when I go in here. You know, I can't close that, and I and I'm right here. And I and I zoomed in. It just I can't. I. It's just like it's all over the place, you know. I just wanted. I just wanted. I wanted a different experience. Okay. Have you tried letting? Uh, we can figure that out later. Fine. I'm not gonna play with it. I'm so confused. What are we working on today? All right. So let's get back to this whole server side thing. All right. Does that mean? Let's see. Dev. All right. So what is being rendered? Okay. Definition. S React suspense. Definition L1 stream. L1, H1, null, children, Abra mix, loading, dot, dot, dot. So that must be your must be your suspense. Uh, oh, that's this guy right here. Okay. So that is what's loading us, right? So that's the thing that's loading. Import search box. Interesting. Interesting here. I'm going to send you to a different uh, place. I assume I can't quite look. Oh, hey, look, there's performance. I love the performance tab. I wish I had that Netflix. I our Netflix uh, node. I assume this will be kind of muddled with other things because this is the dev one, right? Just delete the dev panel and try the other stuff then. Uh, what is happening right now? I'm just playing around. Just shush. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay, so this just waits for this thing to go. So while this thing is waiting, we do that. Okay, fantastic. And so this does this, which does the searching, which goes in here. All right, so that's the search box right in here. And so which one of these are the clients? Use client. Do we have any use client code? We have two builds, search box. Search box is the, okay, so search box is the only use client out here. All right, Ben, are you going to tell me that this is now shitty code? Note to self, add show hide to dev panel. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Search box, search initialization. All right, is pending, start transaction, use transition. On chain, start transition, navigate, search, okay. We have an input. Okay, so the reason why this thing is a use client, the reason why it's a use client is because it, it, it attaches to some of those events. So therefore, okay, so this thing actually streams down 
this information right here, right? So I don't know which one that one was. Search box. Oh, interesting. So, okay, so it's going to be doing, it's going to be sending down individual pieces of content. Is that kind of its... Okay. Okay. It sends down that stuff. Interesting. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm just looking Costco. at what it sends down. What else Hello. does it send down? Okay, this must be something else I don't want to look at. Where's it? Where's the thing? Where did you get that sending stuff? It's a React server components. Yeah, it's server components. Hushri, thank you very much. Uh, when do we want interactivity to use? Uh, let's see. Teach this whole stream is ungrateful. I know. When do you? Let's see. When you want interactivity to use client, right? Yeah. Note to self: Do not give up the prime. Let's see. Do not give prime uh, my code. Yeah, I know. It's every. It's every person's right to do that. All right. You're lucky you're using Tailwind. If this didn't have Tailwind, imagine how I'd feel about you right now, Ben. Okay? I see that it has Tailwind. You're lucky. Oh, I, I did I have the JS filters on? Oh, do I have filters on? Oh, shoot. I don't want JS filters on. Don't, why do I, it should be all. How did I ever get that on? All right, oh, there's some, well, Localhost. Oh, interesting. What a weird message. What a weird message. Do these numbers represent what component gets what message? Is that what is that what's happening? It's adding a query parameter with client code, which triggers a render or re-render of the whole uh, tree server side. Use transition allows the search box to remain in place and show a nice loading state. Oh, nice. So hold on. So 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 so. Uh, let's go back to this thing. So if I search on here, what? Uh, foo. Lovely. Am I kicking? Are you caching results? Is that what you're doing? Are you caching results? Nice. Empty. Successfully empty. And so now it. I don't. Oh no, you're not caching results. Okay. I was like, oh, wow. Wait, maybe you are? Why am I getting favicons? I got a lot of questions there about these favicons. What are these favicons doing? Render this. Launch a rocket and change the world. Hey, Prime. Hey, hi. Uh, yes. Implemented by Dan uh, Abramoff. Okay. Interesting. My favicon. Yeah, it's, it's my favicon as well. Huh. I am very curious what these uh, the I mean obviously these numbers have some sort of targeted meaning within uh within here, right? Why are you loading? Why are you loading? Why you got to be loading? Why you got to be loading, Ben? Ben, what are you loading? What are you loading, Ben? Ben what are you loading? Ben. What are you loading, Ben? Ben? Is this how I get Bitcoin mined? Oh, these nuts. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Did it break? Oh, yeah, it broke. Hey! Well, look at that. Well, look at that. Healthy gamer. Hey, uh, Dr. K, I assume. Hey, Dr. K, I hope that you had a w lovely stream. Was it? Was the person's name Bose? I thought I saw the uh, go live message. Something Bose. Am I right on that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, yeah. So I don't know who this Bose fella is, but I did grow up in Bo's man. So it feels like I could get along with whoever Bose is. So that feels right. And she was the bomb. She was bomb. This seems very excited. Boozman. Okay. I'm Bozo. Okay. Thank you for contributing to the conversation. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm getting AIDS. I know. It happens to all of us. Uh, she was amazing. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the Bozeman. I'm the Bozeman. Uh, she's a true crime streamer. Really? What the heck is a true crime streamer? By the way, this song, luckily you guys just rated at a good time. I think we're just about to hit a banger on accident. So for those that don't know anything about this stream, hi, the name's the Primogen. Um, I uh, do pretty much exclusively, actively murders people. Uh, I exclusively do programming. Look at that. We program on stream. Just stream, programming, all that, right? Kind of weird, huh? Uh, and uh, she was on Smosh at one point. I'm not sure what Smosh is, but also sounds excited. I, I'm not, like, great at the internet. You know what I mean? Uh, this whole, like, this, this whole thing's a little funny. So I've never, uh, we're unhealthy programmers. Welcome to the unhealthy programmer GG. And here's the deal. So I'm looking at React server components. Now, I am not much of a soy dev, okay? I don't live my life at Starbucks. I don't drink soy lattes. I don't try to program in JavaScript. You know, I try to keep it to a minimum. But today, we're taking it to a maximum. So I'm happy that everyone's here because I don't know what the hell's happening. And now you don't get to know what the hell's happening either. We're doing JS on the back end. We're def definitely unhealthy. There's a lot of unhealthy stuff going on right now. Uh, this was a perfect stream for me to get raided into. Nice. I'm on the path to learning full stack. All right. Nice. Yeah. Great. Uh, damn, React. Time to run away. I know normally I run away. I don't do a lot of React. Typically, so typically what we do on this stream is... A, either I do, let's see, uh, what, what do we do normally? JavaScript memory? Oh, no. What, 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 what have I been doing lately? Oh, yeah, left pad these nuts. So I, I had to do this, like, whole research into, like, left pad and why was it so slow and I got embarrassed on the internet and then it involves graphs and lots of data and how, why, which one actually is faster? Why is Stack Overflow the worst place to get answers from? Like, we're talking about, like, by numbers, it's the worst place to get, okay? It's just the worst. It's just like they give you the worst results. Someone literally created on Stack Overflow as an unironic answer, uh, left pad, uh, finalist. They literally created a, a recursive version of left pad as the answer, and it was accepted. And the worst part is, is that you just a little bit of work. You can make it tail recursive at least. And it turns out tail recursion, tail recursive algorithms are actually faster like, who would have guessed? It's, they're actually faster. They're, like, statistically significant in JavaScript. Who would have guessed? I would not have guessed that. And so there you go. That's kind of what we do on this stream. Can you program me a girlfriend, please? Great question. Uh, obviously, you're an Arch user. So just get your Pokemane full body pillow out. There you go. Girlfriend. I get it. I get it. You know, using Arch is, a, is not just... A piece of technology it's a lifestyle choice and some people choose the lifestyle choice of uh elden ring you're just maidenless okay i get it you're playing the elden ring real life hard mode maidenless enjoying it it's good times though i mean i too also liked uh elden ring so uh we all, by the way i work at netflix by the way arch equals a sigma Mostly Sigma. What's your distribution? Oh, I'm on I'm on Married with Children Pop OS. Okay, so Pop OS, Married with Children, you know, career, that kind of stuff. And that's a follow for me. Got him! <laughs> if you use Nick's OS, uh, Pop OS is great. Yeah, uh, this song slaps. Oh yeah, it gets better. Uh, all those left implementations are redundant. Yeah, I know. But here's the best part: is that oh gosh, uh, sorry, we were playing out with something. Here's the best part is after all the research and approximately 75 million requests to a server, guess what? Guess what we found out? There is actually a faster version than the native version. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it's even possible. It just makes me, and the worst part is when you read the code, it's genuinely the worst thing you've ever seen in your lifetime. When you look at the code, uh, you, you have to just like, you have to poke yourself in the eye. 
like gently poke yourself in the eye. Because you know what the worst part about this is? You know what algorithm it's actually doing? The same algorithm as repeat. So how repeat works is that it slides off each bit and multiplies by two. And due to the fact that JS Engine doesn't use strings as its data structure, it actually uses what is referred to as the rope data structure, which does have log n uh, appending. Remember that, log n. You know, tell that to your imaginary girlfriend. Uh, and that's what makes it so dang fast is that you don't have to resize your memory allocation, you know? The rope. Trav, you actually won. I am retrying it, though, Trav. I did collect a whole... Uh, do you torture people with Bitwise uh, quest operations in your interview? No. You should know Bitwise operations, but no, I do not. I do not. I don't, okay? I don't. So, let's see. Uh, all my girlfriends have uh, been interested in my log. No, they haven't. You don't have to, you don't have to lie to be cool with us, okay? Chat, Jopity. You don't have to lie to be cool with us, okay? It's mostly Arch users and Nix OS users around here. So we don't, you know. Prime, your wife is imaginary too. Well, I have four imaginary children that keep spending all my imaginary money then. I am the girlfriend. Damn. Uh, dropped off. Uh, oh, gosh. Get out of here. Okay. And so I did I did rerun my experiment, by the way, uh, this morning with uh, data or this the last night. So I have a bunch of new data in here. So if I Vim data. Oh, yeah. I use Vim, by the way. You know, kind of like the best one. You know what I mean? I, I did a bunch of Apache benchmarking right here. And you can see the time per request and all that. And I have multiple of these. And for whatever reason, my data parser is all borked up because I should just be able to go uh, data process data and then I should be able to just say like something, right? If I say nothing, it should just print it all out. So I should be able to left pad Travi and it should just say it, but it's only saying it right here, which is a little bit confusing to me. I don't like what I'm seeing right now. Why? Oh yeah, and if I go which Vim, it is alias to NeoVim. I use NeoVim, by the way. I use... Has your wife ever been on stream? Yes. If you give me 20 gifted subs, you will see my beautiful wife. Got him. Got him. Welcome Thank to you Costco. for uh, later. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Ed is the best editor. Is it? Do you work for Netflix? I work for Netflix. How'd you know? That is a trap. It actually isn't. Uh, is this related uh, to your, uh, embarrassing problem, your problem at work, or the embarrassment? The embarrassment. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, for lithium to drop another 20. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Anyway, so there we go. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, I'm actually going in here, and we're looking at server components, uh, because I've never really played with server components. Uh, talk about your keyboard? No, I'm not going to talk about it, but if you need to, if you need to see it, I mean, I'll let you see my keyboard. Okay? I mean, I, I look, look at that sexy. Look at that. Do you see this? Look how sexy. Uh, and that's why we're the unhealthy programmer GG stream. Uh, anyways, I hope Dr. K had a good uh, a good stream. Mm. Mm. Welcome to Costco. I love you. That actually tasted like missed opportunity. Delicious. Uh, stenography? No. I've never heard of stenography. Sounds like a fake disease you might get from the streets. Great stream. That was a great stream. Bro looks ready to speed run. Hell yeah, we are. All right. Uh, anyways, so what we're I so I now know that this is the only client side component. So if I wanted to make my own client side uh, JSX, <laughs> what a rookie! Can we all agree that Mr. Ben Holmes? By the way, can we get a quick shout out for uh, uh, Ben Holmes? Ben, wait, uh, B Holmes. Uh, he's the one who made this little project. He didn't even. Use Vim to make it. And on top of that, get this. Didn't even use double quotes. I know. It's pretty It's pretty awful. Okay, so there is this whole transition thing. I don't really understand transition. So do I just go export default and give them one of these, right? Okay, we don't do, we don't do type definitions around here, right? And oh my goodness, does that look familiar? All right, let's go like this. Um... So let's see, uh, div eight equals D. Okay, there's my nice div. So what do you mean display name? What the hell's a display name? Oh, my display name, uh, foo, why not, huh? So you're telling me that if I go down to page, I can suspense this or I can go in here and I can go foo, 
right? And so that just works, right? Where are the types? The types are gone. I didn't choose this, okay? Is that an anonymous component? Yeah, so that means, theoretically... Oh my goodness, it is so broken. Dan, I have just compl or D Dan, ban, ban, damn it, ban. Uh, I think we've completely broken this one. Take that out, there we go. Okay, so we did get this, so that is a client side component. Give you the meat? Hey, Count Gregor, thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that. Small div, bro. Okay, I thought it was statistically average. Uh, first, a channel Welcome I'm to subscribing Costco. to. Awesome content. You. Hey, thank you. Some, uh, just some guy. Zezcop. <laughs> the show, let's see, show us the suspense code. No suspense code, baby. We've already looked at it. Uh, but anyways. Okay, so that means I can add my own client stuff on the server. Let's pass a server component to this thing. So I should be able to go like this, right? And, oof, oof. So let's actually put this thing in here. Can we agree to that? And let's put that thing with a suspense, huh? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. And then go, wait, 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 wait. I don't have a foo on here. What did I call it? Client side. And let's take that thing. Move it up here. I don't need dev panel anymore. Let's put the page right there. Let's, uh, yeah. All right, so let's go back in here. So that means I should be able to take in children, which means that I should be able to take in children, right? Did I get that correct? I did get that correct. Look at that. We still got things. Okay, I see how this works. So we got that client. Ooh, there's a lot of interactions now. What the hell's happening? Uh, it takes in shortles. Okay, so does that mean I can go in here and can my... Uh, just for fun. So search. What is search? Search is what? What the hell is search? Search is passed into server root. Uh, where is a uh, server root located at? Um, who uh, page.jsx? Does that appear anywhere? Oh, resolve source. What is that? Oh, is, is that how this thing works? So it takes that. Entry point is that. What is search? How does search get here? What is search? I don't know what the hell search is. It's a string? <gasps> is that a query parameter? Oh, sh oh, forgot the percent 20. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. Mm. All right, so that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. So does that mean one day uh, you'll realize it's superiority? One day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, Waylon. Thanks, thanks, Waylon. All right, so does that mean in our search album list which is a server-side item. Hold on, can I go like this? Oh, no, we don't want this thing async. Do we want it async? I wonder if we do. Can I add in a depth? Well, you know, some of us, you know, are better at being... Shut up. All right, um... Can you do... Let's see, what can we do here? Can we somehow give them the old rigmarole? You know what I mean? Let's put this thing in here. For whatever reason, I'm just going to put it in here. All right, let's go here, and let's go... Why can't I import it? Why, why come no import it? Uh, albums. There we go. Al anal bum covers. Does anyone know what that's from? Anal bum, bum covers? Sean Connery. Come on. He, uh, he is, just saying, worth a shot. Uh, might come in as JSON, but that depends how you uh, did the fetch. Okay. The rapist. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for 500. Um, Yeah, Celebrity Jeopardy, good. Hey, Bill, my strings, I appreciate your advanced three months of tier two, by the way. You need to pay the import tax. We're trying. Uh, let's go depth. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, why didn't I paste? What? Uh, depth. I thought I had that thing done. Okay, so there we go. So we got that one. 
Let's just do a little depth right here. We're going Welcome deep on this Costco. thing. Welcome I love you. Can we recursively do these things? I don't know. Can we do that? Can we keep on doing this? Welcome to Costco. I love you. If it's less than that, can we re uh, can we return in albums? How many how many times can we do this? Yeah, I guess we don't need to do that, huh? Is that like an allowed thing? Can we just recursively make it all crazy? Oh, get all is not defined. Like, how weird can we make this? L listen to me, Tre listen to me, Trebek, Trebek. I s <laughs> I'm not a conjurer of sheep. Like, I can't. Somewhere between Gandalf and and the other guys, what I get? I have an exam on database theory tomorrow instead of watching Twitch. Classic. I know it happens. All right, uh, cannot use that. Okay. Ooh, we got it. What happened here? Boom, bow, boom, bow, boom, boom, bow, bow. Uh, looks like this. All right, I think I forgot that. Really? Did that not make it recursive? Did that not make it recursive? Uh, do you have a get by text? I don't know. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I, this is not my project. I'm just playing with it to try to understand it. I just like to do weird things to it to try to get what's happening. Okay, I'm just trying to play with it so I understand a console log. Hello. Hello. Uh, let's go. Albums. Uh, al anal bum covers. Depth search. All right, and let's go seven down and go like this. Searchable album list depth search. There we go. Can we just do this one? Oh, oh, shit. Yeah, oh. Oh, sh oh, shit. Yet it looks like this. I would expect it to see more. Is there more underneath? I can't... Oh, uh, Dan, Dan, why is it backward? Ben, help! What, I, what did I do to it, Ben? Ben! Damn it, Ben! Did I do this, Ben? Did you do this? Who did that? All right, uh, let's go like this. Just to make sure I didn't... Uh, here, get, get, get out of here. Damn it, Ben! All right. Oh, 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 that, that got wild. Okay, so there's no more. Really? There's no more. I thought I'd get a lot more Ds. Honestly, I thought I was going to get a lot more Ds in here. Right? You know what I mean? Like, I honestly thought I'd get more Ds. Because it should reorder, right? So I should be able to get console, uh, log, uh, searchable, album list, uh, going deeper, right? I should see this one. See, like, we should see a bunch of things being rendered, yet... I'm curious, why doesn't that work? Right? Am I crazy? Oh, I think I know. I actually think I know. Oh, I know. Do you Oh, do you guys understand why? Do you understand what went on here? The answer is staring you right in the face. No? No one knows? Just quiet? Nap. Balls is attached to the string, which is attached to the cup? Yes! Ropes! Rope strings! You are a back-end dev. You show us the damn code. Okay, so the answer is actually really simple. It's really, really simple. I am rendering a searchable uh, anal bum cover. And if it's less than two, I re-render. So then I do this again, and then Welcome I do that Costco. again. And I then finally you. I do this. I don't actually render anything until some other point. So if I'm pretty sure if I just do that, this should do the thing. Should I, I think I should at least get some divs. Yeah, there's my divs at. Well, look at this. It's starting to look like Twitter now. I'm starting to become a real front-end dev. I'm becoming like a real front-end dev at this point. I'm finally starting to create some divs. Stack Overflow. He just added div, ladies and gentlemen. L divs, divs, baby. Big divs. You know, it's about that big div energy, okay? Okay. I think... I am using, I am wearing the wrong one. You need about a hundred more divs? I got you. I got you. I got you, baby. 
There we go. Proper twattering. That is so slow. Do I have... I must have a weight somewhere. Do I still have a weight? Oh, should I just hit reload again? Fuck. This can't be real. Is there a leak somewhere in here? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, let's drop the consoles just to, like, really ensure that there's no goofies going on. There is this get all that actually goes in here and has artificial weight, which is 200 milliseconds. Are you serious? Uh, that didn't feel like 200 milliseconds, though. I guess maybe it did. I don't know. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, there we go. Good enough. So that must be the problem. That has to be the problem, because nothing else makes any sort of sense. Right? Okay, good. That was the problem. I was about to say, like, what the hell are we looking at? Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, look at that thing go. Netflix, by the way. I, it felt about that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was seeming a little weird. Uh, you forgot to remove all the printing. Uh, Cutting-edge technologies, folk. Any plans of trying Mojo? No. Your div is leaking. My div is leaking. Okay, so... I have not used this enough to have any sort of real opinion about it. Like real concrete. I'd, I'd have to build. I'd have to really build out some stuff to really like. Uh, to know. Uh, can you center divs now? Are you, are you asking me? Are you asking me to center a div? Why? All you have to do is put in here uh, with full flex justify uh, everyone knows this, justify center align uh, items, right? Uh, item, item items center It's that easy, folks. Okay? It's that easy. I hope that you guys all realized that even somebody who does not do front end can center a div, okay? You must be a web dev man. It's not in the center due to some padding issues, okay? Don't be coming at me with your little padding issues, okay? It just happened to have this extra little business right here, okay? It's not my Welcome fault that it came in with all this extra sauce you. on the side, okay? If you look right there, that's clearly centered. Okay? Clearly centered. Now do it in IE6. Uh, I don't think IE6 had window resize. You'd have to use a table for that. And I can't remember all the things required for a table, but I'm pretty sure there's a line center for, for table. But if we do resize, I mean, to be completely fair, you can just do it. I've never used an X state, no. That's by uh, Mr. Piano, right? David K. Piano? I think so. Margin zero auto pog. <laughs> First try. <laughs> um, do it with JS only. I've done it with JS only. It's actually not that hard. It's really not that hard. If you want to... Shit. It always this is like this is how it always happens it always happens this way every single time like uh, index.html like if you really want to do this all you have to do is just have yourself a little div okay and we're going to do a little div if you want to do it with only that let's go like this uh style equals background color red uh with a uh, 100 uh, pixels, uh, height 100 pixels. Now, forgive me, I am not a front-end dev at all, so, you know, you're just gonna have to deal with that. Uh, let's go file, colon, slash, 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 uh, home, and pause, and personal, where the hell is this thing called? Simple risk, simple risk, app, index.html, Wait, is that not it? Fudge. 
Uh, CD, wait, what, what the hell is this thing called? CD app, there we go. Present working directory. Present working directory! Uh, echo, present working directory. Present working directory, what the hell? Wait, have I forgot how to use present working directory? It's not lowercase, isn't it always lowercase? Is it not always lowercase? Yeah, there's my index.html. There it is. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so now that we got that, let's go like this. Welcome to Costco. Let's take I that thing you. and let's take this thing. Let's put it in here. Let's have the background to this one be black so you can see it. 500, 500, pretty good, right? So refresh it. There you go. Um, let's go like this. Let's go uh, function ID equals uh, foo. Yeah, yeah. And ID equals bar. Okay, great. Let's do this. This should be great. And let's not make it 500. Let's make it 50%, right? Because that's a little bit more exciting to me, honestly. 50%. There we go. Uh, let's go script. Do one of those. Now let's go like this. Let's just make sure we got this all right here. Alert. Hello. Right. Perfect. Okay. Function. Uh, get position. All right. Or uh, function get, let's see, uh, uh, what is the thing called? Get info? I'm not really sure, right? Uh, get info? What's the thing? What the hell is this thing called? Uh, I, I like the term position, but I also want size in there. Uh, element, all right, and do one of those. Let's see, I forget the API for it. Uh, get the uh, width and height of a DOM node. Boom, boom, boom. It's element offset. That's right. Nice vars. Bro, nice vars. Uh, get the um, get the position. Do I have to have? I think I have to have a relative here, if I'm not mistaken. Position relative. Uh, yt. Uh, there we go. I don't know why I didn't just go relative. Do that again. All right. Uh, get the position. Oh, is it really offset top and left? Nice. Is that true? Is that true? Is that true? Let's find out if that's true. Uh, info alert. I don't know why I'm not just checking the console because I just decided that I wanted it to be really annoying. All right, so apparently that's not, nothing's executing. What's my issue? Quirks mode. Uh, HTML. All right, hold on, hold on. Uh, head, head, bam, body, take that. All right, there we go. Does that make it run? Okay, what what am I missing here? Do I have to have some sort of some sort of JavaScripts on this? Console.log, hello. Does this is this not how we do it? Oh, do I not have console? Wait, what? What is going on here? What am I missing? What's the thing? Doc type? Do I have to have a doc type? <laughs> Give element uh, to the function. Uh, no element passed. I know, but I should. I should still get something. I should still see console hello, right? I don't even see that. Oh, hello. I'm a front end dev. I've, I'm a front end. I'm a front end. I'm a front end dev. People, you see this front end devery going down? Do you see that front end devery going down? Do you like what you see? You should like what you see. Uh, foo equals document get element by ID. Going here. Foo bar G. Hit the hit him with the G. Uh, console dot law. Jason dot. Oh, we don't even need to do that. Uh, uh, info foo. Uh, hit him with one of those. Going here. Really? Am I still having a problem? No, there it is. Okay. Perfect. So if I go like that, uh, function move element. Yeah, let's just have one of those. Uh, move the element to, I don't know, 69, 69, just for fun. How do you move an element here? Really? You want to use top and left? Really? Interesting. That's the one they're going to go with. All right. Move uh, foo. 
Perfect. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go like this. Center element inside. There we go. Right? Um, uh, let's see. Parent. There we go. Uh, const. Actually, let's go right here. Let's take these two. Let's put them in here. Go with that one. Right? Uh, const. Uh, ooh, actually, let's go like this. Uh, info equals that. That's not right. Uh, parent info. There we go. Element info. Like it. Element. Uh, parent. All right. So now we got to get the diff. Uh, const x diff equals. Uh, yep. And then give them the old y diff. Thank you very much. So there we go. So now we know how much to do. So that means we only need to go like this. We need to go, what is it? Element style 2f def. There you go. That's perfectly correct. And then go ry. There you go. All right. What did we do wrong? Uh, x diff, y diff. x diff, y diff. Y, what's, what's your deal? Why aren't you loading? Oh, I didn't call the damn thing. Center uh, foo bar. All right, perfect. Now I'll go like this. We have one small problem here, right? Which is uh, obviously to go like this, which we have to take this thing and we have to minus, um, what is it called? Elemental info uh, with divided by two. Take that math.floor, this whole thing. You know what? Let's go like that. Let's just delete that. Copilot will hit me with the correct stuff for me. Thank you, Copilot. There we go. Oh, we didn't quite get that one. Is that not it? Oh, I, is it not? Is it not at the top left? I always forget these things. Is it not at the top left? Oh, you like 0.5? This was your, your big fan of 0.5? Uh, so much math. Uh, is this what coding looks like? I never learned this trade. Yeah. I thought this was, uh, I thought it was that. Is that is the center? Is that, is position in the center? I can't tell. Is that not center? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I do have a wife, okay? I have a beautiful wife. Thank you, Lithium, for the 20 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you. Weird. I thought you had to do half the height. Okay, whatever. So now all we got to go like this is go um, window on resize. Is it on resize? Maybe. Whatever. Okay, so that is definitely not... I mostly use Copilot as a means. Of course. Of course. There you go. See, you can do it. See, you can do it. You guys can do it. See, you guys can do it. I believe in you. You guys can do it. You just got to put your back into it. And that's all there is to it. Back end dev, by the way. Hey, I, I centered it with Tailwind. And so someone said JavaScript only. I just did it with JavaScript only. What, you can do it without JavaScript only? You can do it. Just need a little AI helper. Okay, come on. I just did it. Weren't you watching? Yeah. Uh, well, we have a relative inside a relative. I mean, this is illegal in some states. I get that. All right. Is it too late to shill Elixir? No, it's not. Uh, is this how front end, uh, how you got on front end masters? Exactly. Damn. Splitting OG ice cube lyrics. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, or just grid and place. No, it's, it said no JavaScript only. You'd use a flex box. You wouldn't use grid. Grid. Or use grid. Okay. I like this song right here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, people. Uh, are you on Linux? Yeah. I use Linux. I use Linux. Thank you, Lithium, by the way. I appreciate that. All right, who are we rating? I haven't rated Justine in a little bit. We could do Justine. I just rated... Uh, who are we doing? Who are we doing? Who are we doing? I got to go. I got to go to work. I got to go to work. Who are we doing right now? What are we doing? Who are we doing? Uh, grid, real front-end devs only use float. Uh, all front is... Our, let's see. I could. Asmongold? Is Asmongold on there? What is it? Zach Rar? 
What, what's his name? It's like uh, Zach Rar. Did I get that right? Oh, I got that right. Damn. Somebody buy me something. Someone. I got that two R's and everything. All right, we're doing... I have never... I have never raided Asmund Gold. Okay? Asmund's just angry because I have a better jawline. Okay? That's the problem. Okay? He just can't handle the fact... I also have a lot of hair. This is true. You two look like brothers. I mean, we're both wearing white tees. I mean, I would argue my white tee looks better. Ooh, I, oh, is that nipple? Oh, is that nipple? Am I giving you guys some nipple on screen? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Last stream, everybody. Last stream. Thank you, Warren, for the 20 biddies. Reported. Free the nip. Oh, the nips aren't free. Hey, isn't this like Twitch legal, right? Oh, my nipples aren't free. These aren't free nipples. They're contained. They're contained, okay? They're contained safely. They're safely contained where you cannot touch them. All right. Um, the name is the primogen. Uh, this was fun. Uh, Server-side components, huh? I don't know.